Caribbean people. The world knows that we're vibrant, creative, athletic, but innovators? Are we people who can create companies and brands that can take the world by storm? Well, I believe the answer is yes. And if you do too, then Uptick is a show for you. We'll meet entrepreneurs, innovators, and leaders who are building a new generation of Caribbean companies and brands. We'll learn from their ups, downs, and overall experiences. I'm your host, Chike Faro. Uh, well, everybody, this is Chike Farrell of Caribbean Ideas. Um, really excited to welcome you to season three of the Uptick Caribbean podcast, where we explore the stories of Caribbean innovators and people who are pushing the envelope. Um, and today we have an exciting conversation with uh, the founders of a company called Metal, uh, based in Trinidad and Tobago today, but, but doing really interesting things. And I'm sure we will learn about um, where their scope might be. So I want to welcome uh, Kieran Mohammed and Edward Inkblefield. So good to meet you both. Well, you know, I think we'll we'll just sort of dive right in and I'll kind of, you know, ping questions to, to each of you. Uh, but would love to maybe just start, maybe I'll start with you, um, Ed, and maybe you could kind of give us a, an overview of what metal is and what you've been working on recently, and then we'll we'll dive in from there. Sure. Um, I think it's going to be nuts and bolts of it. Uh, but essentially, metal is an end to end platform. Uh, it allows doctors to prescribe medication um, to patients. The patients then use an app that we also developed that they can fill the prescription on the app. Um, that is then sent to our in house pharmacy. Our in house pharmacy then fills the prescription and then we deliver it to the patient's door. So, in its very basic sort of, um, as I say, nuts and bolts, that, that is what metal is. Um, it's a lot bigger than that in terms of, uh, of that. Just product offering, you know, it is a full service product as well. We do offer a lot of patient support, um, pharmaceutical sort of counseling and, and stuff that, like that. But at its very core, it's, it is our end-to-end -end platform. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is that one of the like every season of uptake, there's there's some theme or or the other that I get interested in. You know, in last season it was about purpose and perseverance and pivoting, which is kind of timely given COVID and so on and so forth. Um, you know, this season, I'm interested in a couple of different things, but one of them is on sort of like impacting wider communities and social entrepreneurship. And so, so that's something that, you know, you have both been really leaning into with this particular initiative. Um, and I think, you know, from, from some of our conversations prior, um, you know, I learned that you both had very personal experiences, you know, that sort of led you to seeing an opportunity and thinking about going into this space I mean, you could just tell tell folks a little bit more about it because one of the things that people are always interested in is well how do people like get to the ideas and you know and what what sort of this start so so maybe you could kind of share maybe ed will start with you and you could share a little bit more about that yeah sure so like any good idea it started over drinks um <laughs> we were kind of you know shooting across different ideas and, and the conversation came up you know of, of sort of the the ability for our parents and and um and our elderly grandparents to, to manage their medication essentially. So the, the sort of the, the seed for the idea was, you know, why doesn't anybody deliver medication? Um, so we kind of let that sort of stew a bit and then went back and sort of dug into the data. Karen is a data fiend. So he jumped into that and, and he found this this brown and bustle um, literature that that stated that one in two prescriptions globally is never filled, you know. So they had this massive global problem that sort of so we recognize, you know, in, in, in very close proximity to ourselves, you know, in, in our space, you know, with our, with our mom and our, and our aunts um, sort of having this, this issue with managing the prescriptions for our, our grandparents, you know. So it was a very, very real problem that we saw very close to our, in, to our families that, that was really this massive global issue that is affecting millions and millions of people and costing, you know, millions of people their lives and, and millions and millions of dollars in, in the global healthcare um, um, space. Yeah, that's 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 powerful. And, and you know, as you said, it's like, um, you know, sometimes you can kind of start. I always use this example of um, being at a conference with one of the Netflix co-founders. Um, and it's and it's not the one it's not the like the really famous one. But, you know, he made his money and he's able to go around and do the, do the speaker circuit. And he just talks about looking for pain. Um, and it's one of the things that I that always stuck with me, you know, because pain can be, you know, all over the place. And you're like, wait, you know, why is you know, why is it, you know, so hard to get a parent or a grandparent to, to take a prescription drug or to just 
fill it and follow through and you know, then you start peeling back the onion it sounds like that's what you that's what you did um and that is a good start but then of course that's not enough right you have to then go start taking action and figuring out well what what are the ways that you can build a solution to the problem because i'm always intrigued by how people end up doing what they do sometimes the route is linear almost almost um more commonly it's circular right um and so 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 let's talk a little bit about about background so 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 ed where did you grow up in um you know in in the caribbean talk a little bit about you know obviously trinidad but tell us a little bit more there what did you do studying and that sort of thing and how did it connect or not connect with uh with an idea like this oh my, my background is incredibly varied um i went to culinary school um in trinidad in at tthci uh studied culinary arts but prior to that i had done you know done uni in canada for about a year and a, and a bit and actually left came back and said then went to culinary school um i spent close to 10 years in the culinary industry in various positions i had a small restaurant karen likes to claim it's the first vegan restaurant in the caribbean i'm not sure but i'll take it <laughs> um might as well, might uh, as well take it <laughs> yeah yes um uh had a catering company as well um was doing condiments for a while uh, my most recent um thing which was probably my most successful thing and, uh, and the most difficult thing to disconnect from uh, when we sort of had this metal idea come up um was actually doing cookies um so i was i had a baking company and we would supply um cookies wholesale um to, to retail spaces and to cafes and, and stuff and now that, that business actually was taking off and doing quite well so karen said earlier that he had to go to his boss to to get approval and, and I think so did I in some way because I had to go to the wife and say hey by the way this company that's doing really well I need to close it down um, right. and do something else and not take a salary but um but yeah so as I say my my, my background is, is incredibly varied but always um in spaces where I would have to sort of develop process and, and process was really important uh, you know in, in the culinary world you know process is, is critical you know in a, in, a, in a restaurant space in a kitchen environment you need to know exactly what's happening you need to have a very sort of on, keen understanding of, of of you know a to b you know what goes where what happens when you know and because if you don't have that process you're gonna you're gonna completely fall apart um and i think that sort of goes into some a lot of the stuff that we we sort of look at just in our daily lives and in in metal in developing processes and and you know just in general sort of product development you know we look at the, the pain points we look at the process how the processes work you know what are the what are the areas of friction that the customer might experience or the user might experience and say okay well how can we extract that or how can we add some layer of, of, of technology or some layer of maybe an offline process that can kind of assist them in in in, in a, achieving what they would like to achieve with 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 our product or with any other product to, to, for that matter you know we have some stuff in new works right now where we're really excited about and and that will you know revolutionize the way that people actually experience um prescription medication in in, in 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 the region actually um so that's something we're really excited about as well but but yeah so very very varied very yeah. varied background but um but but very much always focused on that sort of process and understanding how things work and, and how to make them more efficient better you know for a customer for, for a user experience yeah i think what's what's cool about that is yeah from from sort of you know culinary experience to to to, to med tech and medical technology that's that's quite that's quite the journey but but what i like about that is as you said you know you you have you know, trans transferable skills that you've learned in that particular sort of phase of your life that can be applied here, which I think is an important thing for for listeners to hear. And so, so Karen, let's go to you. So, um, so okay, because it sounds like so far, two folks doing something in the medical space um, and no medical experience. But maybe Karen, you're gonna you're gonna surprise me with economics <laughs> and medicine, or or tell tell me a little bit more about you know how you got your start. Well, Chike, first I'll say it's not immediately obvious how a banker and a baker are going to dismantle the entire healthcare industry and rebuild it from scratch, right? But then when you start talking to people, and you spoke a little about, a bit about transferable skills. And a lot of this is really about how we think, right? Like you, you talk to Edward and you very quickly realize that he's totally deranged. I mean, this is a man who is going to count the amount of chocolate chip cookies in, in each one of his cookies, right? And you can actually also tell people by their hobbies right. as well. Like what Ed lo loves to do for fun, like he, he gets really very excited about like very, very precise forms of woodworking, right? Well, it turns out actually, well, that he is also the terror of our UI designers, 
right? Because th that kind of level that's of what, precision. That's where precision becomes your friend. Exactly. That mm -hmm. level of precision, that level of detail is absolutely crucial, particularly in an industry like healthcare, um, where detail is totally crucial. Um, like, you know, I, I know it's a mantra, um, you know, move fast and break things, right? But in healthcare, you can't because the things you're breaking uh, turn out, you know, sometimes to be uh, sometimes to be pretty important, right? Um, but I, I think, but but to go back as to why, uh, how our backgrounds prepared us to 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 get into the healthcare space, I think two things. One is the first thing is uh, uh, our ignorance, right, and our immediate willingness to accept that we know absolutely nothing about the space. That means that when you come in to the space as an outsider, you can actually quite naively ask a lot of questions that for what, whatever reasons of internal incentive dynamics, people actually don't ask who are in the space, right? Um, the second part of it is also the willingness uh, to set aside s some form of ego. We're also neither of us are technical, right? Neither of us are engineers. So that means that uh, and, uh, uh, of course, there are a lot of fantastic companies that have been built upon someone just tinkering away on their own and building this beautiful platform. But that's not what we set out to do. We set out to solve a lot, uh, a lot of real-world problems that involve uh, changing systems, right? And for that, we need to listen to people. That required a lot of very, very active empathy in the early days. Uh, you, uh, it required interviewing literally dozens and dozens of doctors. We're really fortunate to now have two of the most brilliant doctors um, in, the, in the region on our team now. Uh, Professor, uh, Professor Paul Tilak, who is the, who is the um, pr uh, president of the medical board in Trinidad, Dr. Alexandra Ames. She was the first person to bring telehealth to the Caribbean. Um, we have that now. We didn't have that at the very early days, but we w were willing to listen and knew uh, who we had to ask. Yeah, I, you know, I love that because, you know, as you said, okay, so, so, so banking in your background, financial services, you know, being an economist, but you said a couple of things that really resonate with me. I, you know, at, at uh, Criminal Ideas, my, my business partner, Brevard Nelson, and I, um, we have... Uh, fought to try to embed culture and values and core traits as a as a foundational principle and we've we've been through in our 13 year journey periods of time when we were growing really fast and felt like looking back at least with some perspective that we weren't as laser focused on culture um and then you can see that or at least i connect that okay the period of time when your business wasn't doing that well is also somehow happens to be um, the same time when I felt like we weren't doing that. And then we really kind of tried to recommit. And, you know, that's a, like an ongoing journey. But a couple of things that we always talk about are empathy, um, as well as, you know, the, the mix and the balance of empathy with straightforwardness and transparency. And, and so, so that resonates with me when you kind of bring that up. And then also active listening, um, you know, and, 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 just not, and just being able to sort of say, look, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Just ask a question and then try to make a connection. It's a super powerful thing for anybody who's trying to build something or innovate. So I think that's a really powerful thing to, to talk about. And that actually, you know, is probably a good segue to, you know, kind of coming back away from some of the backgrounds and the path here is building something like what you're trying to build that requires connecting different stakeholders like the ones that you're talking about, um, particularly in a Caribbean context where, frankly, you know, sometimes we don't want to go jump to the most innovative way of solving that problem. That's got to be incredibly difficult. It's good if you can, if you can pull it off. It's great for building a competitive moat, as we say, but there's a lot of work inside there. So, Ed, I want you to, to tell us a little bit about, you know, how you've gone about stitching these different constituencies that Kieran talked about. Um, and what have you learned through that process for anybody who's trying to do something similar? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things that we can sort of look at in, in, in with regards to that. You know, the, I think Kieran touched on it really well there with regards to sort of coming into it with a, with a sense of humility and not really... Um, assuming that you know anything, you know, being very humble in that sense. Um, but I think also there was, there was 
the way we sort of built the story of what metal is. Um, I think that a lot of that was helped by some of the relationships we developed quite early. Um, the IDB lab was a huge, huge play in that, you know, being able to come to, to into the IDB lab, getting that, getting that grant um, funding and, and sort of that credibility from, from the IDB sort of really helped us to sort of be able to push um, how we sort of develop the story and the narrative of what metal is and what we're trying to achieve. And then going to stakeholders and saying, you know, this is not just, you know, this for-profit company or this cool idea, you know, this has real value in it, you know, and, and, and can really make a, 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 a massive social impact. Um, and, and really, you know, there's a lot of scalability in the idea as well, you know, so there was, there was, there was that, you know, in, in terms of like building what the, what the story of metal was and becoming good storytellers. And that really started with, with sort of being good listeners, as Karen was saying, and, and understanding what people problem, people's problems were, um, and, and developing a solution that really addressed those, those issues. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to come back to you with one and then we'll, we'll kick it back to Kieran. You know, you, I'm, I'm, I'm a marketer by trade, so. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about storytelling and and so on, and 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 I perk up, and and frankly, you know, since since part of the way that I you know learned about the work you're doing is from a you know a conversation with with IDB. Um, you know, I think there are a couple of thing, things that are interesting there because in in my sort of tech software world, um, you know, living in the U.S. and so on, I've seen great pitches a lot, right? Um, and and one of the things that is usually common to to pitches that earn you uh, capital is actually great storytelling around the problem and how you're going to kind of connect to it. Um, and in the Caribbean, we talk a lot about the difficulties of raising funds. So you've done something that is generally pretty hard to do, um, and you've done it, you know, fairly repeatedly. So, so what can someone who is, you know, trying to go down that road kind of take away from your experience? Where would you say you had missteps? Because I'm sure there were some. Um, so, so tell us maybe about that. Let's learn from something that, that, that didn't go well on the journey towards, you know, eventually starting to, to build more awareness and understanding and appreciation for the story. Um, I'm trying to sort of signal in on any one particular thing that didn't go well, because there's a whole slew of them that, <laughs> that we can kind of choose from. Um, I think that, that while um, there was a lot of benefit for us to sort of enter into this space with, with that sort of sense of naivety that we didn't really know what what we sort of were, were getting ourselves into. Um, there was a lot of risk in that as well, um, and and that did cost us um, in some sense in the early stages. It's sort of in 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 terms of how we sort of develop develop a platform, um, in terms of how we built it out. Um, I think that if we maybe had a bit more experience there, we could have we could have you know saved ourselves some time or some or some money. But um, that was maybe one of the one of the areas where where we thought you know. We kind of had it under control and, and 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 maybe didn't didn't so much but i think that sort of that sort of comes out when you watch it at, at the end of the day you know once you sort of readjust and sort of try and go with the punches a bit and and and, and come back to center and, and and really start to focus more on or start to refocus sorry on 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 what the what the actual core of the product is and, and what the value you're bringing is um and redirect that that sort of lost time or lost energy into 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 the story of, of what you're trying to build you know and um as i said i mean there's 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 a lot of, of areas where we could probably have improved on um in the journey and i don't want to hark on it too much but yes it, it really is about sort of recovering from that i think that is, is probably what i can say more than anything else is that um you will experience some very very difficult moments and, and i think it's in the recovering from that and then that, that is just that is it comes down to pretty much just absolutely anchoring yourself to the problem you're trying to solve and, and become absolutely obsessed with that. Um, and the solutions will come out of that. Yeah, and, and, and Kieran, I think, you know, as, a, as an economist, my father was, uh, was an economist as well. And, you know, I like to think I got a little piece of, um, of his, his economic brain. So e e economists are usually very comfortable with, you know, cyclicality, with things not going in, you know, simple straight lines. That's just sort of the, the nature of the game. So as you kind of, you know, reflect on on your experience and, and, and building on what Ed just kind of talked to, what stands out for you in, in the experience that you've had, but, but, but connect that to the future? Because the problem you are uh, tackling is a, is a huge problem. And it's not necessarily a, a Caribbean only problem, as you, as you mentioned. So how do you think about the path from where you are today with some, with some runs on the board, but are still a big, a big opportunity in, in, ahead of you? Um, what are you kind of taking from the past into the future in terms of how you approach this next wave? 
Yeah, well, I think in terms of the vision, that has always been very, very clear, right? And and I, you touched a little bit on this in your question earlier, Chike, which is how does innovation happen and how does innovation scale, right? I think one of the big challenges, you see this a lot in small uh, developing countries. Um, you certainly see this in the one that we're from, is that they approach innovation by, okay, let's do the Amazon of Trinidad or something like this, right? The, the, or the Uber, Barbados. Um, and that is exactly the wrong way to do innovation. That is not how innovation happens. Now, that is tech, technological transfer, which is fine. But um, that is not how you build sort of global, solve global problems, right? And the way you do that is you start solving problems in a difficult environment, and then you generalize and scale from there. So the problems that we are solving in this market are the exact same problems uh, in Brazil, in Mexico, in Colombia, Panama, Argentina, which combined have a, an, a, a pharmaceutical market size, it so happens, of 75 billion US a year. So uh, uh, why, if we have solved this problem for this developing country, right, we're like, we have no direct competitors in any of those countries. We, all we need to do, we take 5% of that market, which is had to grow to 100 billion in three years, and then we're a $5 billion company. It's as simple as that. Uh, but also, it's interesting, and, and Ed alluded to this earlier, which was when you start listening to people, you start to discover ways to solve problems you hadn't even thought of. And, and two of the main things there, like COVID-19 was one of them, right? We didn't build metal to um, address COVID-19, but it turns out that we help elderly, immunocompromised people get their medication in a remote way, right? So it, it turned that was why we were one of uh, selected by the IDB out of 500 uh, LATAM companies. Um, but, but on a broader level, uh, there are other really exciting things that come up, right? And... Uh, Tying it once again back to what you said at the beginning, like trying to dig into social entrepreneurship now. I do not believe that there can be any company right now that can start without trying to make some kind of social impact. And, uh, and mm -hmm. going to that, right, we realize one thing. Uh, uh, we realize as d learning more about pharmaceuticals, learning more how that works we started to pick apart actually some of the huge injustices and inequities in the system. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, 90, about 90% of all global drug trials are basically done on, uh, it, on white people in, um, in, in Europe and in Canada and the United States. The reason for that, GK, is because uh, it costs about a billion dollars to, to to develop one molecule therapy, right? So it doesn't make sense to develop molecules for uh, for for different uh, subgroups. Precision medicine is just too expensive, even though those groups are going to interact differently because the genetic framework is different, right? Of of Latin Americans, of Black people, of people of color, right? It doesn't make sense. So uh, so being in the space, we're like, okay, hang on. It turns out that what we're doing, we're helping people to manage their medication. We are improving their health care, improving their lives. What is also happening as part of that is that they are trusting us. And one of the things that they're trusting us with and with their consent is how uh, the data about how they interact with their medications. Yeah. Exactly. Of course. So what we can do with that is by gathering that, we can actually construct artificial drug trials, Right particularly for underrepresented populations, right? Because those are the markets that we're operating in. We can construct those artificial drug trials and go to, say, Pfizer or AstraZeneca and say, hey, guys, it doesn't take a billion dollars to, um, to develop your drug. It'll, it'll take $500 million, right? Um, uh, because we can, we can provide this. And then that is where we go from being a $5 billion company to a $30 billion company. And that is where we go from, mm -hmm. from saying, okay, we're going to make a big difference in the developing world to say, okay, we are going to make a huge global difference in public health. Yeah. And, and I think what, what, you know, what I love about that is I love the scale of the vision and the scale of the ambition, because you know, I talk a lot about 
um, that with with folks that I you know coach or mentor from a Caribbean standpoint. Like think bigger, think you know, think globally, and think about global competitiveness. I mean, that, like that's like the, the purpose of our company is to to help Caribbean people and organizations be more globally competitive and influential. And we think we can build businesses that that are you know profitable and generate. Uh, economic value while also doing that and I love that you know that uh, what, what I what I see in a lot of these podcast conversations is you know that's there's a co- coalition of the willing that's all trying to do that in different ways and I hear that in in kind of the scale at which you're thinking which I love but there's a lot of work to do to to, to get there so as we start to wrap um, you know you've had to build connections with stakeholders you've had to build technology you've had to connect storytelling and you each have you know professional experience some business experience etc but now you're tackling it in a, a at a scale that um you know is, is a whole different level so how, how do you how do you both sharpen this saw ed will come back to you how do you you know how have you been kind of i mean obviously there's a lot that involved that is involved with just learning on the job but what are you listening to what are you reading what are you kind of getting into who are you talking to to to, to help you get skills up in areas that you mightn't have had that you that you recognize that you need? Honestly, over the past three months, not enough <laughs> of any of that, um, given that I've had a newborn um, that has been taking up most of my time. Um, but previous to that, it was honestly, Karen has been a huge um, uh, influence on my my re- reading up and, and, and up, upskilling myself. And, and he is obsessed with, with various podcasts and, and, and readings and and he shares with me, them with me constantly. So I think that right. I can definitely sort of defer that that question to Karen because he can he can give you the um, give you the names and the and the, and the titles. All right. of all take, the things, take take the baton then, Kieran. Let's yeah. let's let's hear some of the podcasts that you like and the books. I, I think that, what uh, Ed is Ed, 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 that 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 was Ed maybe subtly saying, "Don't send me ten articles at four in the morning and say, okay, <laughs> we're going to completely change this whole thing." Um, but uh, yeah, no, there, there, there's some, I would say the, the most immediately is the people that I learn, uh, um, you learn from different ways. Um, what, am I, what am I consuming? Most readily, actually, I have a few friends who are also entrepreneurs and I, they actually teach me a lot, their different styles, right? Um, uh, what to do and what not to do. Um, and for, uh, for example, I have one, uh, a friend in the cannabis space, right? In California, I have another friend in the in sort of the, the the tech space kind of a similar um similar kind of entrepreneurial uh, paths and levels and i learn a lot from them but uh, so uh, again i would say to your listeners just go out for you know go out to, uh, and, and meet as many people as you can interesting people um in terms of content um so my favorite economist by far is um tyler cowen so um, some of your listeners may have may have uh, heard of him. He has an, a, the, the single best blog, which is called Marginal Revolution. Um, and he talks a, a lot about, he, he's a total polymath. So he'll talk a lot about film, a lot about health, a lot about food, anything. Uh, so I've, yeah, I've been, I've been loving that a lot. Um, also Matt Levine uh, uh, has these wonderful, uh, uh, Bloomberg really like has been, is very good at breaking down a lot of like complex trans financial transactions into, for example, the meme, whether that's the SPAC craze or whatever Chamath's doing these days. And he breaks it down and, you know, strips away the emotions, strips away the hype and say, okay, this is what's going on. So yeah, th- those are just a couple of the things at the moment. Yeah, no, I, I love, love that. <laughs> say again, I love this Peter Thiel as well. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, of, of course. course. Uh, Peter, you're going to have to do that. And um, so, so you know, I think I want to get to now kind of a, of a, of a final thought. Um, you know, there's been so much goodness in, in the conversation, and I'm really excited about the journey that you um, both have embarked on. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot to do, the big problems to solve. And as we say, you've got to break big problems into smaller problems. So, so I'm sure you're kind of, you know, tackling them as you go. Um, so Ed, I'll start with you, you know, uh, a thing you would say to your younger self, um, you know, uh, you know, even even 10 years ago, five years ago, um, that you think would have helped with, you know, 
setting you up in a in an even better or different way what, what would what would one thing be um probably not to second guess your gut or your good ideas um i think that's in in many cases uh so the, as karen was saying you know we we, we had this idea sort of in, in the pocket for about three years before we actually did anything with it um and to think if we had three years on top of what we've already done already achieved we would be you know enormous at this point right um so i think that that's because it took a lot of sort of re looking at the current space and, and how and what and what we were going to do and, and and overthinking it a lot and and i think that it, a lot of that sort of came down to sort of even the sort of second guessing the the uh, the, uh, the entry into the space you know i think and then that came down to sort of being not having a technical background not having the medical background you know um and and sort of breaking down that sort of risk aversion that's 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 um, I can, I'm on a, sort of natural risk of risk, and, and Karen has also helped with that. So um, it, it me sort of break out of that, whereas Karen is the opposite, and I had kind of help him to, to pull him back every once in a while. Um, so, so yeah, so I think that that, that could be a, a bit of learning that sort of um, not second guess yourself too much because the opportunity may be lost. And thankfully, it wasn't lost in this case, um, but, but, but definitely uh, take some risk and, and, and kind of go for it. Yeah, that's a great one. I love that. Um, you know, it's an important thing because you, you know, you you can have as uh, anyone on the innovation journey, whether that's entrepreneurially or within a larger corporation, you'll have moments of self doubt. You're like, oh, should I do that? Should I not? Do I need more data? Um, you know, and I think even Kieran, you you talked about it earlier on about getting stuff in the hands of customers and letting them rip it apart because um, there's so much value in that. And as a uh, uh, my friend from Facebook, for the first person we ever had on a, at, a, at a local conference on digital marketing said, you know, she's like, at yeah, Facebook, we say start by starting. So so that that reminds me of that. Okay, Kieran, over to you to, to, to bring us home. What would you tell your um, younger self that you think would have helped you uh, along your along your journey? Hmm. Yeah, what, what, would, what would I have told my younger self? Um... Probably, yeah, along the same lines. I mean, Ed, Ed, might, Ed might think I'm too risk-loving as it is, but I would also say, yeah, yeah, maybe have even more, even more sort of ambition and be willing to, because be willing to sort of look past some of the incentives and, um, and, and, and kind of say, well, look, it, it takes the same amount of time and energy, for, for example, to raise uh, a million dollars as it does a hundred million dollars. It really does. It's the same thing you're doing. Uh, so think bigger picture from early on and jump in. I think we could all, Ed, Ed is totally right. We could all be taking, uh, even now, we could all be taking at least 30% more risk. Yeah, I love that. I, 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 I have, um, you've given me some memories there of, a lot of things that I would, uh, you know, have gone after even harder. And I, yeah, I tend to think I, I like a little bit of risk myself, but you know, as you guys both talk about it, it reminds me that, yeah, you know, sometimes you got to swing, swing even bigger. Well, listen, I want to, I want to thank you both for, for taking the time to come in and chat. Um, you know, I think one of the things we'd, 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 we'd love to do as well is, you know, there's so many additional tributaries off of the river that we could go spend more time on, uh, you know, what it's like to, to, to be co-founders and work and be, you know, good foils for each other and so on. So I'm sure we'll, you know, find some ways to, to get some of that out. But, um, you know, I think this has been really exciting, a great op uh, opportunity for our listeners to, to hear another example of folks tackling a problem who are from the Caribbean, um, you know, exposed to a lot of the same things that, that they've been exposed to, but, but, but taking entrepreneurship in this case um, with, a, with a social angle and thinking really big. So I want to thank you both for your time. It's been, it's been awesome chatting with you both. Definitely. Thanks so much for having us on. Yeah, thank awesome. you very much. Great. Make sure you know the next time an episode of Uptick drops by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. And remember, share Uptick with a friend. Now, on behalf of Caribbean Ideas, this is Chike Farrell signing off. And remember, keep on ticking up. Mm -hmm.